Your Massachusetts real estate market update for the week of January 16, 2023. So we're going to go over single family and condo data for that week. We actually saw a drawdown in the single family inventory market and for a really unexpected reason, quite frankly. And then interest rates, they were down last week. We actually saw people getting a 5.5% 30-year fixed interest rate, so we've got to talk about that. And as always, we're going to do a quick check-in with the distressed properties around Massachusetts, and then we're actually going to take a look at some recent event articles, and it's going to start with the foreclosure forecast for 2023, and uh, we're also going to take a look at the country's biggest investor buyer and their eminent default. And this week, we're headed to Chatham to take a look at a luxury home uh, that will get some updates by its next owner, and that's after the new owners deal with the seller's current asking price of $16.5 million. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a 1,000 houses and one of the state's top agents. And if you like hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market, then make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button below. But let's dig into the data and start with the single family market. We currently have 3,339 properties on the market. Now, inventory dropped from last week's increase, but not because of new listings or a decrease in new listings. It's because of an uptick in under agreements in the market. And I have to tell you, this makes sense in seeing the buyer activity that we've seen in the last couple weeks. Buyer demand is, dare I say it, strong right now. Have the four month low interest rates really brought a swell of new buyer demand to be seen? This is making me think that there is going to be a huge first move advantage this year. In other words, the sellers who are first to the market, they're ultimately gonna be handsomely rewarded. We had 549 new listings come on the market in last week, and this is a great increase in new listings and pretty much on par with last uh, year's 563 units that were listed this week last year. But the real tell is in the under agreement data. We had 608 houses go under agreement last week. Yes, this is still nearly 18% below last year's under agreement numbers, but it completely absorbed last week's new inventory when there were 608 new listings that came on the market. There were 404 homes sold this week with an average sales price of $640,000 and a median sales price of $512,000. And that months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market, five to seven equal market, and seven months or more is considered a buyer's market. The more aggressive we get to zero, that's the better seller's market. This week, months of inventory ticked up to 1.13 months from last week's 1.11 months. Um, and this is indicating a strong seller's market. And with the increase in activity, I feel like it's about to get stronger. Sellers who are contemplating selling this spring, they might want to consider moving up um, their selling time period to a little earlier. But onto the condo market, we had 1,804 condos on the market as of Monday. Inventory increased slightly this week after a strong build the week before. Now the amount of inventory that a buyer has to look at today versus today last year increased to 345 additional units. Now 300 newly listed condos came on the market last week. This is still 16% below the amount of inventory that was listed this same week last year. 288 condos went under agreement last week. This is a good increase from last week's 230 units, but still 26% percent below last year's numbers when 390 condos went under agreement. 157 condos closed last week for an average sales price of $605,000 and a median sales price of $490,000. And then that months of inventory, it actually ticked up to 1.6 months from 1.56 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then smash that like button and I truly appreciate you consider subscribing. Now let's talk mortgages. It's been a pretty good month in the mortgage market. As I mentioned last week, interest rates are at four month lows. And looking at a seven day change, we actually saw some pretty great movement in interest rates. I actually heard some buyers getting a five and a half percent rate on a 30 year FHA loan. This makes me think about the conversations, many of them that I've had with buyers over the last month saying that many of them are gonna come to the market once those interest rates go down. I gotta ask, at what point do interest rates go down enough in order for all these people to come back in the market? And if you're in this camp, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below as to where rates need to go in order for you to be a buyer again. But on to foreclosures. Accounting for all single family condos and multifamily properties in the market, we currently have 124 foreclosures for sale in Massachusetts, currently 27 short sale properties for sale in Massachusetts for a total distressed property inventory of 151 units. Now the percentage of distressed 
properties to available inventory continues to increase and is now at 2.59% of all available inventory in Massachusetts. Still nothing to worry about, which brings me to this article that talks about foreclosures and forecasts for 2023. So check out this article. Foreclosures, forecasts, fix and flips, what ATTOM's data can tell us about 2023. First off, ATTOM is one of the most prominent data companies out there. Their data is considered the best. So let's see what they are saying. And the first question the article asks is, will there be a foreclosure tsunami in 2023? Sharga, who is the executive vice president for marketing intelligence, awesome title, says there's virtually no chance we're going to see that kind of foreclosure activity again. Before the pandemic, foreclosure activity was running running a little low compared to historical numbers. That was largely because of changes in lending practices that were put in place back in 2010 as part of the Dodd-Frank Act, including the qualified mortgage rules and the ability to repay rule. Then they asked, what's different about today's foreclosure market compared to the Great Recession? Now this answer is a little long, but it's worth it. He says, 93% of the borrowers who are in foreclosure today have positive equity in their homes. That's completely the opposite of where we were back in 2008, where one third of all borrowers were underwater. While foreclosure starts are edging up, we're not seeing very many bank repossessions. Instead, these borrowers in distress are executing a soft landing. They're finding a way to sell their home before the foreclosure auction at a profit and getting a fresh start. He further states that the ones that go, get to auction are selling through at about 70% rate, which is about twice the normal level. Investors are gobbling up these properties in auction. So between fewer properties getting to auction, fewer properties getting past the auction, there's just far fewer properties for the lenders to repossess. Like I said a couple moments ago, these guys are the pros when it comes to data. Just some food for thought for all the real estate market is going to crash from a wave of foreclosure folks, doom and gloom folks, but I guess we shouldn't let data get in the way of a great story, right? Then there's the segment of the market that's called the iBuyer or investment buyer. Open Door was, was and is the number one player in this market. It's true that we didn't see them in our market, but they were major players in other markets around the country. So they matter. So check this article out. Open Door in 2023, the I buying king and a business model in turmoil. Now, in my opinion, these guys are toast. They're hanging on to a business model that really doesn't work, but are sitting on nearly $8 billion in credit facilities. I actually kind of feel bad for those lenders. And take a look at their opening line. Let there be no elephant in the room. Things did not go as planned for iBuying in 2022. And who but Open Door is the king of iBuyers. Now let's get a quick recap on how things are going. In 2022, Open Door laid off staff and shut down some of its ex auxiliary services. Rather than scaling up its pace of buying homes, it closed 2022, pulling back after reporting losing almost a billion dollars in three months ending in September. It shifted its focus to a new side of the business. Then its president and CEO departed. First, Zillow left the iBuying business, then Redfin, and many others are going to follow. These models paid market and sometimes above market amounts to buy these houses. They then charged the sellers 5% and then turn around and put the house back on the market. The market worked with rapidly rising home prices, but it doesn't when home prices slow down or, dare I say it, go in the negative direction. Open Door artificially pumped up the markets, and now them, as well as the other homeowners in the markets they focus on, like Phoenix or Salt Lake or Atlanta, well, they're about to pay for it. And I don't see how these guys, and quite frankly, this model survives. But now onto the luxury estate in Chatham that I was talking about before. The home is located at 504 Old Harbor Road. It's an eight bedroom, six full bath estate that is nestled on 2.93 acres and spans 4,859 square feet. You know what I love most about this home? Is that from the street, it actually looks like just any other normal house. But from the beach, it's big. Oh yeah, it's perched on a hill that overlooks Chatham Harbor, North Beach, and beyond to the Atlantic Ocean. It has almost 300 feet of private beach. It's been owned by the same family since the 1940s, and quite frankly, it's easy to see why. It's just a stunning home. I personally just love the character of this house. 
But yes, the sellers are asking for 16 and a half million and most likely that next owner is going, co going to come in with new kitchens and new bath renovations. Maybe adding a pool that would just be incredible on top of that hill. I have to say, I just love this house. But you want to talk about your personal real estate needs? My information, it's in the description below. You can also visit www.youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information and we're going to reach out to you whichever way is best and works easiest for you. I love to talk real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about the real estate market data? Then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to answer you. And as I always say, an informed person, well, they're a powerful person. So until next time.